I'm gonna go ahead and assume that if you click this video, you don't need me to tell you how important it is to learn Splunk, but just in case there's some stragglers out there, let me show you something. Now this is kind of fun. When I started in tech, I said, I need to build a skill set that will keep me employed. Let me find an approach, let me find a way to survey the market, see what skills are in demand. And when I was doing that, Splunk kept popping up. So how did I do that? This is super crude, not scientific at all. Go to Indeed, punch it in, and you can see here, there are 2,258 jobs that mention Splunk somewhere in the description. Yeah, I know, you don't need to tell me again. I, I get it, it's not scientific, but just follow with me here for a second. So if we have 2,200 some jobs mentioned Splunk in the job description, what about QRadar, which is a competing product to Splunk? Okay, 42 jobs. That is vastly fewer. What about a little less popular, like Sumo Logic? Okay, now we're down to two jobs. So you can see Splunk is by far and away the highest demand seam style log aggregation skill that you can develop. So how do you take that aha moment, light bulb, I need to learn Splunk so I can get a good job and turn that into doing it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get more experience with Splunk. Uh, also a little bit of experience with AWS and some experience with Terraform. Now, if you haven't worked in AWS or Terraform, I'm going to kind of step around that a little bit. I'm not going to dive into the details in this video, but if that is something you do want to learn about, let me know below in the comments. I can obviously help you there. I can show you how to get there. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use something called an AWS AMI, which is basically a virtual machine with all the stuff we need already installed on it. Deploy that into an AWS account for very little money, if not free, and then log into it and kind of turn you loose, set you off to the races so you can figure out things on your own. So one of the very first things that you need to understand is the concept of an AMI. If you're not familiar with AWS, uh, an AMI is just this templated virtual machine that somebody builds, in this case Splunk, they turn it loose on, on Amazon. You can buy it or you can use it for free. In this case, we're gonna use it for free because it uses a BYOL, a bring your own license deployment model. So we can use it for free. Uh, you can also deploy it enterprise and you know use it with a enterprise license. But the reason this is important is because it skips the uh, nuance step of installing Splunk. If you haven't installed Splunk before, you know that it can be, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's not bad, but if you don't have any skill set on Linux administration or Windows, if you're for some reason running on Windows, it can be uh, a hurdle to learning Splunk, which is really why you're here. You're not learn how you're not here to learn how to install Splunk. You're here to get more experience with Splunk from a uh, power user perspective. And this is the best way to do that. So getting back here, we have this AMI. How do we use it though? Now you can just log into your AWS console uh, and sort of click through here and, and you can deploy a single server in AWS without having to use Terraform at all. But we're here to build a comprehensive skill set that is desirable to employers. So let's go ahead and dabble in Terraform a little bit. Okay, so I am assuming you have an AWS account, which is free. Go get one of those. I'm also assuming you've already installed and configured um, Terraform, which means getting AWS keys set up and configured in, in, in Terraform. Um, so you can use the AWS provider. And at this point, you just need to create a uh, basic script. And I know we're looking at this and it's 35, 40 lines long. And you're saying that's not very basic, Chris, but let me walk you through it. So Terraform starts with just about every script you have, or maybe all of them says, you know, we need to define a provider. In this case, we're using AWS. And then we get a little more specific. And under that, we say, we're gonna use the US West 2 region. Under here, we're gonna define our first resource. This is an AWS instance. We're gonna call it Splunk Server. And then once again, that AMI, we were talking about that just a minute ago. This string of characters right here is the specific AMI for Splunk in US West 2. So if you're in US West 1 or US East 1 or 2, this AMI is going to be different and you'll have to look that up. Below that, we have the instance type and this is just referencing a, a size of a virtual machine. So think compute and storage, memory, etc. cetera. Uh, under here, we're telling Terraform, we need to assign a public IP address to this so we don't have to set up a complex VPN to connect to it. We just want to put it into our browser and then go to the right port and connect to it. Under here, we're gonna say, 
uh, give us a VPC security group ID, and then we give it a variable. Under here, subnet ID, this is basically placing the Splunk server into these VPC security group and subnets or subnet. And then down here, we define the resource for the AWS security group. We call it the Splunk server security group. And we're gonna let port 22 and port 8000 in. 22 is obviously for SSH. And if you didn't know, port 8000 is the default port for Splunk web UI. Uh, you can see here we have a little uh, placeholder here. I'm going to paste in my public IP address here in a minute uh, when I do a Terraform plan and then Terraform apply to make this change happen. And then going down here, you see another resource, an AWS subnet. This one's called Splunk Server. So what this is, is it's the AWS subnet for Splunk Server or called Splunk Server. There's a VPC ID. I pulled this out of my AWS uh, console. I know there's a crafty way to get this through the AWS CLI or even using Terraform. Uh, to query a data source, and then you could take that data source and use it as a variable and put it in here. I don't know how to do that yet. I'm still figuring this stuff out on my own. Uh, this CIDR block is associated with this subnet. And then down here, there's an output. This is the first one and the only one we have in this script. And this output says, basically, hey, you know that public IP address that we assigned to this Blunk instance up, up top? Take that and spit it out on the command line and say, this is your public IP of the Splunk server. All right, now, so at this point, my dogs are done losing their minds because literally Amazon was at my door making a delivery and I'm down here working on AWS. Uh, we can get going again. So first thing we need to do is get into the directory where I have the, uh, what you see, main.tf. We needed to change directory into that. And then once we're in here, we need to initialize Terraform. So we're gonna run Terraform init, I-N-I-T. We're all green, so we're good to go. The next step we're going to do is run Terraform plan, which shows you all the proposed changes based on your code, and then Terraform apply, which then takes those changes in your code, puts them in your AWS account. And then when we're all done, we'll use Terraform destroy, which reverts all your changes and saves you money in your lab environment. So now we'll do Terraform apply. Oops, Terraform plan. And uh, like any good engineer, you should always go through this line by line and really understand what the proposed changes are. However, because I've done this a few times and this is a lab environment, I don't really care if anything gets broken. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip the reading part of this jump down here. Say, yep, looks good to me. Let's do Terraform apply. At which point it'll show you a very similar output, but it's going to ask you this time. It's going to say yes, or it's going to say, tell me yes, if you actually mean to make these changes. So I'm going to say yes, and then give it a moment. And at the end of that, if you remember, I had a output in the Terraform configuration, the Terraform script that said, hey, I need the IP address. Make sure you put that in there. And that's what you see there. That's the IP address. We can take this here. We're gonna copy it, control C, and then we're gonna go back to our browser. And once we're here, it's going to take a few minutes for that server to become reachable. All right, it's been a few minutes. Uh, I'm gonna check it, do a reload. And now we have our Splunk login page. And if you notice up here, this is just regular old HTTP. It's not secured. Uh, on port 8000, that's important to remember. If you just copy and paste that IP address in there, uh, it won't work. If you try to use uh, secure HTTPS, uh, again, that won't work either. You have to use HTTP uh, on port 8000 for that IP address given to you in that script. So the next hurdle that people run into, let me blow this up a little bit. The next hurdle that people run into on um, setting this up is they know the username is admin, however, they don't know the password. And literally, let me pull up notepad. So literally, username is admin. The password is capital letters, Splunk, a hyphen, and then your instance ID for your AWS EC2 instance. Uh, now you may be asking, where do I get this instance ID? Well, there's a few ways. You could, again, using Terraform, define it as an output, using a Terraform data source. Um, 
That's not in that Terraform script I showed you though, so good luck doing that. The easier way for now to do that is to log into your AWS console and find the instance running this. If it's just this one server, it's gonna be just one instance. If you have multiple servers running your AWS account, uh, go through and identify the one that says Splunk-Server. So once you're in AWS, you log in, you can go to your EC2 dashboard or your global view. You just need to identify that instance, like I mentioned, and then copy this right here, this instance ID. So we're gonna copy that and pull this back up. I'm gonna paste it in here just to show you exactly what the password looks like. So this is your password. I know there's been a lot of confusion about how to get into these once you launch them. Uh, in this instance, this is my password. Yours is gonna be a little different because every split, uh, every instance ID is, is unique, but your username will be admin and then password is Splunk-instance ID. So I'll take this information, I'm gonna go over here, admin's already in there. I'm gonna paste in the password and I'm gonna send it. There you go. At this point, this is the uh, the dashboard that I think most people are most familiar with or the, the sign-in experience that you get. Uh, however, if you want to just jump into the search function or search app and immediately start poking around and seeing what you can do, uh, it's important to understand because this is just deployed, um, you don't actually have any data in it to play around with. You know, we don't have any endpoints sending data in. We don't have any applications sending data in. We don't have any infrastructure sending data in. So if we do, um, if we search the default index, which is called main, it's in all Splunk instances, you'll have zero events. That's normal. There's nothing there. However, that doesn't mean you can't play around with this a little bit. There's something called a um, internal index. And as you can see, there's a few. So I brought this list up by doing index equals and then underscore. You can see here we have audit, config tracker, internal introspection, metrics. There's a lot of fun stuff you can play around with here. Probably the easiest one to get started though is internal because these are somewhat familiar looking events. So if I do index equals internal, now you can see we have about 4,600 events that we can go through here and apply various different uh, visualization techniques to. We can learn how to parse things out. We can run how to learn how to build reports and alerts based on parameters uh, and fields and values that you find in these. Uh, and just to kind of put a bow on this and wrap it up to make sure that everyone's happy, let's now walk through destroying this lab environment so you don't get a big bill at the end of the month from AWS. So remember, we did Terraform plan, showed us the changes, Terraform apply, applied the changes. Now we're going to do Terraform destroy, which is the inverse of Terraform apply. It will first list out all the changes it's going to make, but instead of green pluses, we're going to have red check marks, sorry, red dashes. Uh, and basically the red means we're going to just change all this. We're going to destroy it again. Normally you'd want to go through that and really review it and understand the changes you're going to make. However, lab environment, I don't care. Blow it away. I'm just going to say yes. And there we go. Two and a half minutes later, the resource is destroyed. We can confirm that by going back here and you can see it says you're disconnected from your Splunk server. That's because it doesn't exist anymore. Yes, notice different clothes, different day. Sometimes these things stretch out and you run into things that slow you down. So here I am wrapping it up on another day. But anyways, I hope you found that helpful and useful. Uh, if you have any questions about Splunk in AWS or if there's something else that you wanna see, obviously let me know and I can make a video for you.